Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Listen, I'm <laughs> glad to have you guys here. Today is <clears throat> September 17th, 2019. It's a Tuesday. And you know what? Everything is being digitized out there as far as money is concerned. So I went to Walmart, you know? <laughs> Yesterday, I went to Walmart. And, you know, they used to have this quick checkout there in Walmart where they had a whole bunch of registers set up to take cash. And they, they had six of them, these registers. And they had a line up, and you'd stand in line, and, and they would, next person, next person, and go really fast, you know. They tore all that out now, and they put in this whole big section in there where everybody's in there trying to pay with credit cards or whatever, the, uh, the non-cash solutions, you know. And they don't take cash through that section. And then they've shoved the people that pay cash off into a corner, over way over in the corner, against the almost up where the where they where they got all the clothing and stuff. You know, they got like two or three registers for the cash people, and everybody's disgusted because it's a big long line, and they put their slowest register ladies on there. You ever seen the register ladies, the ones that are really slow, and they 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 do one item to a time, and they haven't really got the they always have to ask for assistance. They have to ask the next girl because they probably haven't been on register for a long time. And they have to, what do I do with this? And they're always calling, like, for uh, for price checks and stuff. Those, those girls, you know, the girls are really slow and, and guys that are really slow. They put them on these on the cash registers. And, and then they, they have all uh, the, uh, the good, efficient employees are down there helping people learn how to use the scanning machines and stuff, you know, for the non-cash registers. So, everybody's disgusted standing in line there. And the line is, like, so long that people can't walk through the aisles or anything because the line stretches for, like, 15 people in front of you, you know, with big carts full of everything. It takes about 45 minutes. you got to stand there about 45 minutes if you're paying cash to get out, you know. So, anyway, I was in that line. And I always end up talking to somebody in that light. I just can't, I can't control myself. I mean, I'm, I see what's happening. It's just like, it's driving me crazy what they're doing is they're trying to get rid of cash. Because they want to put in these 0% interest rate policy in. They want to lower interest rates down below zero. And, and you know, the banks, then they're holding your money if they go to a negative 1% or negative 2%, it means they're going to be taking 1% or 2% of your money away from you every year that you keep in the bank. They know that people are going to want to pull their money out of the bank and keep it in cash and, you know, and, and not pay that 1% or 2%. So they're in a panic mode right now to get rid of cash and move us into this new digital what's-it. <laughs> Maybe I'm old-fashioned, you know. But I still pay cash, and I have stuff to wait a half an hour or 45 minutes in line to wait to get to the register. You know, they could fix that easy enough, add an extra register on, or put the put the put the uh, the the cash register people uh, that are on there, the more experienced ones on there that who who can move the people through quicker. They could fix that really easy, but they don't want to fix it because I think that all of the Walmart stores. Are, are working it, 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 toward this cashless movement. And that's why they put in these big sections where people can pay without cash. And, and that's why they've shoved everybody off into the corner that are going to pay with cash. You know? This is what I think is going on. I think that, that the control that the banks extend out over the world, when they want something done, they get it done. Because they get all the money, or all the gold, you know? Anyway... So there we can say goodbye to cash eventually because what they're going to do in the end, in the final stages, I think, to get rid of cash is they're going to come down hard and say that it's used for, for uh, things, you know, the, whole, the same old thing that they say it's used for, uh, money and going to launder money and stuff like that. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, let's get in here and let's open up the charts and take a look at what's going on. Uh... So let's take a look at what's going on here. Uh, and uh, cryptocurrency today. Bitcoin, I come on the show right now because it looks like Bitcoin might be starting to break out a little bit. 
it's been running around 260 something billion dollar market cap for days and days and days and I just looked on here a few minutes ago and now it's 270 so it's up to 270 I did this a couple times before and then dropped back down to the 260s again it might be getting ready to take off you know anyway bitcoin's at 10,271 and it looks like the coins are starting to move up a little bit today but we see a nice little pop in litecoin price litecoin you know you could have had them for in the $60 range now they're in the $70 range you know just a few days ago and they moved up 5.86 percent today you know which is a good little jump uh you know blockchain Blockchain will soon revolutionize our opaque and inefficient capital markets. <laughs> this thing is going to integrate itself everywhere. Honest to gosh. And you get so many countries now, and not just countries, corporations and banks and everything, that are creating their own digital currencies. I can just tell you, goodbye to cash. Cash is going to go the way of the Goonie Bird pretty soon. And, you know, I love cash. I, I've always used cash my whole life. And to me, it's it's something that is like, you know, to move into Bitcoin, you know, to move into this new world. Well, I guess you got to keep up with the times. I remember I got my first computer years ago. You know what I did with my first computer? <laughs> I got it. I had to pay a lot for it. It, was, it had Windows... 2000 Windows Millennium on it and it uh, back then it had an 80 gigabyte hard drive you know and that was a lot back then I paid a lot for that computer uh, it, and it had uh, it had the uh, uh, I think it was 400 megahertz processor single core processor running at 400 megahertz <laughs> and, and that was a fast processor then I think I paid like eleven hundred and ninety eight dollars for that computer Quite seriously. And it was the worst claptrap piece of junk, I'm telling you. And my internet back then, you know, I hook up to the internet and I had a dial up modem, you know. <laughs> now, this was, I think, around the year 2002 or 2001 or something like that. First thing I did with that computer is it started not to function properly. I tore it all apart, put it all back together again, you know, run fine. And I fixed it, you know. But then I got into this thing where I started to want to build computers. You know, I found a place that sold computer parts. And I started to put together a few computers. And every time I get a new computer done, about two or three months would go by, new parts would come out, higher, faster, more powerful, and I'd just be, can't wait to build my new build, build a new computer, you know. So I build a new computer, and it moved on like that for the longest time. I used to build new computers about maybe once or twice a year, you know. I build a new computer uh, with the latest parts, you know, a new rig, a new, and it was it was like a, a thing that was like I got caught up in, that was like a, a little bit of an addiction, you know, building computers. I really really enjoyed that for the longest time. Well, I just built a new computer here not long ago. The computer I'm working on right now. And it's uh, it's a tiny little computer. I built it as tiny as... I built a gaming rig as tiny as I could possibly build it. The thing's only this big. It's, about, it's, it's, it's only tiny. It's a tiny little gaming rig. And it's extremely powerful. You know? It's got a... Uh, an AMD processor, uh, six core, I believe. Uh, one of the new, uh, what's the name of them? The new processors, anyway. But it only uses 75 watts of power. It's got a big power supply in it, you know. And it's a nice little computer, and I really enjoy it. Anyway, I'm uh, honest to God, I'm straying today. Sorry, guys. But anyway, blockchain will soon revolutionize our opaque and inefficient capital markets. You know, this when blockchain revolutionize not revolutionizes the capital markets it's, uh, it's it's going to revolutionize all the way we do transaction all the way down through the system it'll speed up trading eliminate outdated processes this guy gives an example here he says over the past several years much has been said about blockchain's potential to fix a myriad of issues 
from money transfers to digital voting to supply chain management to land title transfers. However, one of the most compelling use cases for this technology is how it will change capital markets. He says, throughout my career, I've witnessed time and time again how outdated processes can bring trading to a grinding halt or how it can complicate it. Uh, he says, I received a call from my team around lunchtime one Friday during the summer of 2018. The operations persons at the large bank holding and shares for our clients had left out early for the weekend. Before he left, he forgot to release the shares for settlement of the equity offering we had placed the earlier in the week. We had to borrow the shares in the open market to complete the settlement. So, he said, this situation left me wondering how large financial transactions could still be derailed by a single person taking a summer Friday off. He says, and this is not the first time in my decade-long career on Wall Street that a human error left a team scrambling to execute a transaction. So, this is going to revolutionize all that. Of course this is going to come in. See, one of the biggest aspects of this new technology is, first off, it eliminates them. They can't cheat anymore. <laughs> no more keeping two sets of books, you know. No more uh, skimming from the system without everybody knowing. And it does away with third-party verification. You can actually quite literally now, I mean, this is monumentous. that You can quite literally now send money across the Internet with no third party needed to examine the transaction. The computer does the verification. Absolutely amazing. You know, every time you use your credit card or you use your debit card, that has a third party transaction. That, when you go to like Walmart, for instance, and you use your debit card, it sends a signal to the bank, and the bank sends a signal back to Walmart saying that you have the funds. If the bank is closed, if for some reason the bank's computers are down, you know, you go in there. You ever seen those days where it says, uh, debit down today, must pay cash? You know, they have a little sign. You go you go to get your hamburger at Wendy's or whatever, or, or say at, at, uh, at McDonald's, and they get a little sign there on the, on the drive-thru that says, uh, cash only today. That's because the bank is not doing the third-party transaction part. They're not doing their part that day. And so they can't get the verifications through on the Internet. So it goes at the speed of light and comes back and verifies it. But with these new cryptocurrencies, that verification is all done automatically. You're your own bank, quite literally. And th this, is, this is huge. Uh, take a look at this article. Technical analysis. Bitcoin needs to break out of this range. Yeah, it's been locked in a range for days. That's why I'm doing this show right now. Look, uh, it could be finally getting ready to break out. It's at 270. If it starts to go up, 272, 273. Okay, let's click the page right here and see. It's at 270.4. Still 270.4, so it's kind of stalled at 270 right now. Uh, come on, Bitcoin, go! It will go all in time. Got to be patient. You know the old saying, a watched pot never boils. Uh, massive U.S. bank plans to launch its own digital currency. Wells Fargo have announced plans. Just a long lineup of these banks and institutions. Not just banks and institutions, but governments and corporations are all fighting right now to get into the cryptocurrency space and launch their own digital currencies. They can't wait. They're chomping at the bit and it's growing. And so they're moving us into this new, this new arrangement where digital currencies are going to be the most common means of transferring money. And where does this leave gold and silver? Where does this leave cash? 
Well, first off, they're phasing out cash. The fat cash is going, but there's going to be a place for gold and silver. You know, gold and silver are, are going to move up massively in value. But they're never going to be used, I don't think, again, as currency. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think you're going to see people going down the street with a coin purse anymore. Not in this modern age, you know. But they're going to be the most tangible form of a store of value. That's what they're going to be. To store value away. And this is what Bitcoin itself is actually becoming. Now, some of these altcoins, I can see them becoming used more as a currency rather than Bitcoin itself. Bitcoin itself is becoming a store of value as well, just like gold and silver. Anyway, listen, thank you guys for listening this morning. You guys have a great day, and we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.